Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Sunday School. We want to continue as we sing from our hymn book, CGS 692. 692. Take the world, but give me Jesus. We shall sing verses 1, 3, and 4. While singing verse 4, um, we will sing rising up uh, for prayer. Um, CGS 692. The two take the wall. King of glory, we bless and glorify your name. We are very opportune to be in the land of the living. We know it's not by our goodness, not by our, our, our righteousness, but by your mercies. We thank you because by your mercies we are not consumed. And in that mercy you have brought us to Sunday school. Thank you, O oh Lord, for the people connected um, through the social media. Thank you for us that are in your sanctuary this morning. We know, O oh God Almighty, in your presence there is fullness of joy. We just commit our Sunday school into your mighty hands that, O oh Lord, you will teach our hearts and make us teachable so that this world, O oh God Almighty, will lead us throughout our pilgrim journey. Thank you because we know you've answered our prayers. And it's going to be a blessing on the school. Have your way with the teacher. Uh, we pray that every contribution, O oh Lord, will help us grow in maturity, in Christian maturity. Thank you for answering, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, we are welcome to our Sunday school. And before we go to our, our class or classes, Okay, I can see some genial here. We are, we are saying the same memory verse. So I want to know whether anyone can say the memory verse from the genial um, class. Anyone? Anyone? Okay. Senior will take over. Uh, yes, Sister Davis C. God bless you. That will do. Thank you very much. And um, we, at the sound of the piano, the junior will move back to their class while 
you enjoy your lesson. God bless. Morning class, you welcome to Sunday school. May the Lord bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Who can tell us the title of our lesson for this morning? The title of our lesson. Yes, Sister Bisi. Godliness. Godliness. May the Lord help you and I as we study this lesson to be um, that godly person that God wants you to be and that he wants me to be too. Amen. Amen. Godliness. We have been studying uh, for some time now in this quarter about the theme um, from Second Peter chapter 1, 5 to 7. We have been um, adding things, you know, when you are baking, especially if you are going through recipe, the recipe is one, two, three, and it will tell you at this stage, this is what you're going to add. And Peter admonished us, he says, besides this, giving all diligence, heart, and we have been adding for a few weeks now. We started with um, humility. We had that humility, and we moved on to forgiveness. And we added obedience. And to our obedience, we added faith. And to faith, we added virtue. And to virtue, we added knowledge. And to knowledge, we added temperance. And to temperance, in our last week's lesson, we added patience. And today, to that patience, we are going to be adding godliness. We want to read from our Bible, Titus chapter 2, verses 1 to 13. Titus chapter 2, verses 1 to 13. I want us to take two verses each. Titus chapter 2, verses 1 to 13. Who is going to start for us, brother? Our two guys starting. Titus 2. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Two, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. Yes, another person. that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. Thank you. Good obedience to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Six, young men likewise, exhort to be sober-minded. Showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. Eight, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Hold on, hold on. Your, your voice is quite low because of the internet audience. Okay, sure, go. Sure. Um, Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to place them well in all things, not answering again. Ten, not for learning, but chewing all good fidelity that, that they may adore the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. Thank you. For the grace of God that brings us salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly love. 
We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Well, 13. 13, sister. 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. God bless you, Ma. God bless you to all the readers. And I know if everybody were given the opportunity, you will all read. So we are grateful. Godliness is what we want to talk about this morning. In the text we have just read, uh, five categories of people were mentioned. And um, um, if you were following, and I know, um, if not all, the majority of us would have read that lesson from hope, that Bible test or a lesson from hope. In those um, um, verses we have read, five um, different ages of uh, people were mentioned. Um, who were they and what does that suggest to us according to what we have read? It's not compulsory you should answer all. Who were they? At least one. Yes, Briar, I didn't get, um, I read to God, sorry. Yes, they are aged men, elderly men and women. Okay, aged men and women, you have answered to, yes? The young ones, young ones. I want you to define young ones, yes, sister? Young men and young women. Young men and young women, there's still one more category. Servants. Servants. God bless you. Servants. And what does that suggest? And I guess in this audience this morning, and uh, we have our internet audience too, um, I, I don't know the group, the category, uh, category of people on our internet audience this morning, but for those seated here, I will say we fit in to all these five categories. We have the aged men, the aged women, the young uh, men, young women, and servants. Majority of us are civil servants. So you may be wondering, uh, no servants. Um, we are still servants in one way. Not, it may not be servants in the way we know servants to be, but we still, one way or the other, um, have to answer to people. And that made us... Um, to be qualified as servants. And what does that? Aged men, um, aged women, young men, young women, servants, what does that? When we think about this lesson we have learned, what does that suggest to us? What does it suggest to us? Yes, brother? And he's talking about all Christians. All. God bless you, sir. All. Um, the internet audience, we will appreciate your... Um, um, Contribution to, may the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. We're studying about godliness. So, now that we know that this lesson is for us, no one is exempted. So, when we talk about godliness, how can you define godliness? And when we talk about godliness, there is the opposite of godliness, which is, opposite of godliness, you, please, yes, Akishola Jr. Sometimes I miss people's names. Yes? Worldliness, God bless you. Thank you very much. When we talk about godliness, the opposite is worldliness. So, in your own words, how can you define godliness? And if you still want to do the worldliness too, you do it. If not, another person will do it. Who wants to start for us? How would you define godliness? How would you define godliness? Oh, what's going on? How would you define godliness? You know one thing, um, you should know me by now. If I suspect, and I, I know this audience very well, you know the answer and you are just being humble, Let's put it that way. I'm going to call you. So just be prepared. What uh, godliness? Who wants to define? Yes, brother. Uh, we all know God. We know, his, uh, we know 
God, we know his character is good. And uh, the act of being God's way is act of acting by God, behaving like him. That's to be God's way. Thank you very much. Yes, bra Aretuga. As you, have, you attend Bible study, you attend churches, you pray in the morning when you wake up. You do everything that will please God. That is godliness. Thank you. Who wants to define worldliness then? Who wants to define worldliness? <laughs> Nobody is worldly. But we were once worldly. If you are not worldly now. Yes, bra. I'm just forgetting people's names this morning, so pardon me. The usher at the back. Hola, Iton. Someone um, thoughts, their acts, their desires are contrary to the will of God. Thank you very much. So now, how can we determine that a decision is godly or worldly? How can? How do I know that what I'm doing is godly or is worldly? How can the decision you take from day to day, what is it that will determine if that decision is godly or worldly? Thank you to the internet audience, um, Rachel Oladele um, has answered them. Um, the ones we have been talking about in terms of the five categories. God bless you. In terms of the young men, young women, and the rest. Godliness is the quality of being devotely religious. Um, that's uh, Rachel too. Adedurua, godliness implies salvation and all the righteousness of God, but worldliness is the opposite. A sinful life. May the Lord deliver us from a sinful life in Jesus' name. Amen. Worldliness is living according to worldly standards, not considering God's will in our decision. Thank you to all the internet audience and the contributors. Yes. So how can we determine that that decision you are taking, how do you know that the decision you are taking is godly or worldly? Yes, sir. Um, that particular decision is does it please the Lord or does it not? So if the decision pleases the Lord, then it's a godly uh, decision. If it doesn't, then it's what? Thank you very much. Any other contribution? How do you know? Yes, sister, Mrs. to do is um, worldly. And if it's godly, you will definitely have um, the peace in your heart. Peace in your heart. Thank you very much. Um, okay, we're still waiting for the internet audience to give us a contribution to that. Godliness is living a fruitful, obedient Christian life. Yes. So, more. <coughs> more. How do you know that what decision you are taking is godly. It's um, if it's a godly, um, the way I know my decision is godly is if it aligns with what the scripture says. So the scripture is like a foolproof way of knowing whether your decisions are worldly or godly. Thank you very much. The Bible is our compass. If it aligns with what the Word of God says, Brad Godwin, you have another contribution to make? Yeah, godliness is basically almost like saying God likeness. How much like God is this person or me or what I'm doing? And the only way I will know if it is actually godliness or God likeness is as sister has said. It comes from what I know about God. If I read his word, if I study his word, I will know that one of the 
primus attributes of God is holiness. Separation from sin, separation from the world. So naturally, if I want to be godly, I know that in whatever I'm going to do, there's a saying that says, what would Jesus do? This thing that I want to do or I want to engage in or I want to involve myself with, is it something that Jesus would do? Is it something Jesus would be happy with? Thank you very much. What we do, Jesus do, very, very important in whatever we are doing. Um, some contribution, Sister Christiana, as many that are led by the Spirit of God, we know the mind of, we know the mind of God. Thank you. Oladele said there would be peace. You do something and then um, your heart is not settled. You know something is wrong. The moment you, you take a decision and you are I'm not really comfortable with this, you know something is wrong. You don't need somebody to come and tell you. May the Lord help us. Amen. Is it possible for one to be godly and worldly at the same time? If it is no or yes, explain. I don't just want yes or no. Is it possible to be worldly, godly and worldly at the same time? I come to church. I do things of God, but when I'm out of the church, yes, I have to, I, I cannot just be living like an old person out. Is it possible to be godly and worldly at the same time? If yes or no, explain. Bra Godwin. Um, the biblical answer to that is no. However, as human beings, we can try and as you said, duck and die, but a Christian is a Christian. A Bible Christian at that is a Bible Christian. Whether it's in the church or at work or at home, really, it makes no difference. And that is what makes the fellowship of the children of God so wonderful because I can come from India, Africa, Japan, or whatever, and I can meet another brother who has been truly saved and is truly a Bible Christian from the other part of the world as we meet we will naturally have fellowship yes. with each other. This is Bible Christianity and godliness. Thank you. God bless you. Bright tank. We do know that people backslide. So the truth is that people could be both sides. Um, that's why the psalmist said that thy word have I hid in my heart, that I may not sin against thee. He knows that some things will come, people will come across things. So the word of God has to fight those things up. It's not that you will not meet that situation. You will definitely meet it. But to say it's not going to be possible, that is not true. We have to be sure of the world we are living in, that we are living in a world where there is sin. So we'll meet this time. They say in the olden days, the priest, you, some used to make the cave, go inside so that they would not see sin outside. But when they come out, I believe the evening they want to go and buy something to see sin. We shouldn't say that we won't meet that. But as a Christian, you have to hide the word of God in your heart and make sure that you don't do both sides. Thank you. What I, I would love to say something there. You cannot live a godly life and as well live a worldly life. If you are a Christian, you are a Christian. And once one backslides, that person is no more a Christian. That is the point I just want to uh, um, add to Brother Itang's uh, contribution. Um, somebody says, Jesus let us, Jesus let us know we cannot serve two masters. We are either godly or worldly. We cannot be both. I agree totally with that. God bless you, um, Samuel. Matthew 6, 24, no one can serve two masters. Those a contribution, the two, um, answers that very rightly. We want to move on now because of our time. Using the scripture, um, we have read least some of the... Um, sorry, list some of the criteria of godliness that we can measure our lives by. 
We want to read Acts 24, 16. Sister Rose, we take that for Rose. Acts 24, 16. Ephesians 6, 18. Bolaji, we read that for Rose. Bless you. I remember that name. James 1, 27. Sister Chioma, we read that for us. James 3, 17. Brother Itan, we read that for us. James 3, 17. 2 Peter 3, 11. Sister Tokme, you read that for us, please. In that order. Acts 24, 16, Sister Rose. Acts 24, 16. Hearing do I confess myself to have always a conscience void of offense offense toward, toward God and toward men. According to that place you read, what is the criteria of godliness in that verse? We cannot say we are worshipping God. Uh, Anybody can help. I'm not putting you on the spot. You have done your bit. Yeah. Anybody can help. It, say, we cannot say we are serving God and we are keeping malice with people. Or we're gossiping people. That is not having a conscience towards God and towards men. So as long as whatever we are doing is not against God, dealing with men, then we must have relationship with our fellow brothers and sisters. Thank you, Sister Rose. Um, unless it is against God, then we take our stand not to go with men. We have a conscience void of offense toward God and toward man. Ephesians 6, 18. Who did I give that to? Thank you. And let's be thinking about the criteria of godliness in that verse. 6, 18. 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Do you want to help with that? What is the criteria of godliness in that verse that we want to measure our lives with? Anybody can help. Brassam. Praying for all saints. Supplicating. Thank you very much. Supplicating means believing and in the gap of people. Thank you very much. James 1, 27. those in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Yes. What is the uh, godliness criteria we want to measure our lives with there? We have this value in us. We will know as part the instruction of God to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction. Thank you very much. Yes, James 1, James 3, 17. James chapter 3, verse 17. Who did I? Yeah, right, Hank. James 3, 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Yeah, what is the godliness criteria in that verse? We want to emulate, we want to measure our lives with. Anyone? Anyone? Yes, sister. Okay, right, and first. Let me ask him just repeat what the Bible says. It uh, should be first pure. Because when the Bible says that, uh, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Then when he said the first thing is to be pure, then when you pure in heart, then the peace of God will reign in you, so you will be peaceable. Thank you very much. Yes, sister. Is that what you want to say? Uh, yes, well, more or less. Um, but also, 
goes on to say you need to be peaceable, you need to be gentle, and you need to be easily entreated. So if you are not easily entreated, there's a problem. You need to show mercy, good fruit, and you don't have partiality and absolutely no hypocrisy. God bless you. God bless you. Thanks uh, to the contributors. I love that easily entreated. Yes. Key for me. Easily entreated. We will all be offended at one time or the other. Even if you decide, I don't want to talk to anybody again. I just want to be on my own. Somebody will still come and step on you. If you are that, you know there are some things I call acid test. If things happen, ah, it's, it's okay. Ah, no, don't, don't, don't even go there. It's not okay. And you go on and go on. Even people outside that are not Christians, you get to a stage, you have a point. You're trying to make your point. You've been offended. It has happened that somebody is before me and um, this person was the victim. But the way the, she was presenting, and she wouldn't be quiet enough, I've got the message, and went on and on and on. At the end of the day, um, she received a warning because she became inappropriate. She could not be entreated. So sometimes we may have a case, but the way you present your case, you've been offended, you've been stepped upon, you've been insulted. May the Lord help you. May he help me. It is an acid test for me. And it should be an acid test for you. We have read all those things. Be merciful, be this, be that. When somebody steps on you, how do you react? May the Lord help you. May he help me in Jesus' name. Some contributors says, a conscious void of offense toward God and man. Thank you. Adio Lu, referring to conscience with, okay, same uh, contribution there. Matthew 6, 24, no one can say, okay, we have done all that. Thank you to all the contributors. Finally, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 11. Brother uh, Femi, I saw your hands. Were you trying to contribute? Okay, 2 Peter 3, 11. 2 Peter 3, 11. Yes, ma'am. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought to be in all holy conversation and godliness? What can we bring out from that that I want to measure my life with? Anyone here? It encourages us to have, um, to, to just be careful about what we say and to make sure that whatever comes out of our conversations are holy, and that brings, makes us godly. Thank you very much. I saw your hand, Sister yes, Linda. Our word before we utter it, to Th ensure that it is godly. Thank you very much. I love the way she says it. Weigh your words. <laughs> before you allow it come out. Hmm? This thing I'm about to say now, may the Lord help us. Some people speak before they actually think. Some people care less. Anything, may the Lord deliver us. May he deliver me too. Yes, brother, uh, uh, right to God. Conversation here is not just speaking. It's in, uh, comparing all your behavior. He said, considering all this behavior, what should we gain on this earth? There's nothing but godliness. All, all these things will be dissolved. Even, for heaven's sake, you need to wash your behavior, your speaking, everything that you can gain heaven. All these other things will be dissolved. Thank you very much. Yes, Sister Rose. Let our yes be yes, our no be no. Thank so. you. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Any other contribution? Any other contribution? Um, the internet audience, I'm not too sure what's going on there. Okay, we'll carry on. They will catch up with us. Okay, did we move on to the next um, session now. In this session, it's actually a scenario question. You've invited a friend 
a colleague to church. The colleague gave you a feedback at the end, maybe at the end of the service or maybe when the colleague got to work. And the feedback is, I sort of like your church, but only that is too strict and demanded way too much for a person. And uh, that uh, colleague or friend now even had an opinion. His opinion is that he doesn't think God will require all this from us to make heaven. That is the opinion of that person. You were the one who invited. What would you say to that friend, to that colleague of yours? Or is it that, um, that, that is the thing, <laughs> me too. I'm, strugg I'm struggling, I'm struggling, our church. What would you say? Practical. It must have happened, if not to everybody, it must have happened to majority of us seated here. What would you say to your friend? Or you say, I agree with you, actually. That, 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 that is it, I agree with you. Yes, I am going to call hands. I have seen your hands, but I thank. I will come back to you, bright hand. Yes, Bratolu. Yes, thank you. As your heart is right with God, that's what matters. Um, if your heart is not right with God, then you can find another church. But as long as your heart is right with God, that's what matters. Then everything else you can then have a look and see what's up. Thank you. More. More. I'm going to call those people at the back, apart from Brother Retuga. I'm coming to you very, very shortly. Those people at the back, apart from Brother Retuga. Yes, Bright Tank. What would you say to that colleague? What would you say to that friend? Um, I don't know. It's a situation where the person is. You don't know whether the person is a Christian already or is just someone to, that is just. Let's so assume the like, person is not a Christian. Thank you. Then I would say what Tolu said, first of all that I was in the same situation. And the first word that came out was, be ye regarded, or seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all other things will be added unto you. When I came in, it was a varied opinion, really, that I was in the same situation with that person. But when you are said, which is true, then you begin to understand. It's just like someone in a group, in a, a, a initiate yourself into a club. It will take time before you master the, the club or even the work the person is doing. It took time to understand. So if the person stays on, you, you can say, come. Come, there are others, other times. We have music, we have this or that. So some other things you will hear that will take over what you thought. But as far as we are concerned, we are relying on the word of God, on the, spirit, in the, on the spirit of God. So the Lord is the one leading. It's not really human beings because Jesus said that wherever two or three are gathered in a name, he is there. So I'm only talking this to us. If we admit that same expression, we know that the Lord has to lead us to actually give the correct answer. We have to pray first before answering. Thank you very much, Brother Ethan. Um, that to make heaven, we need to strive much to enter. Another response is, should be, I have been in that situation before. This is in agreement with what um, some contributors have said. Jesus requires us to take up our cross daily and follow him. So it's not an easy road. But with the blood of Jesus in our hearts, we can make it. He will help us through it. We don't have to do it alone. Um, I, I, this, this end, um, I, I need a contribution from this end. I don't want to mention this end, this angle. So be thinking about your contribution. Yes, as Sister Cynthia, I'll come there. That place has been too quiet. 
about what you have seen. Some specific things that they've or they've heard and actually having a conversation with them about it. Because sometimes maybe you're seeing someone and it's their own personal consecration and it might be something that maybe as an organization we do but adjust them. And more importantly, referencing the Bible and having that conversation with them because some people don't actually know what the Bible says. They just go along with what the general public does but they don't understand what God is calling us to do as Christians. They really don't know what the Bible says. And unless you can open up your Bible and say, the reason why we do this is because God actually says, don't do this, then they will understand why. But if you just give a very blanket approach, you end up losing the person. But people really need to understand why we make certain decisions and consecrations as an organization. Thank you very much. So, Bra Adedayo. I appreciate God for the, for the church because he was able to get something out of the, the service. And then, and secondly, is that um, I will also discuss with him because since we are, he's my colleague, we know that we have what is called like um, um, employment policy and order that we follow in the office. I will also explain to him that that's exactly what we do in the church. We have a policy and the, that we follow, that policy is called Bible. And so whatever you see, or whatever you saw that day, it has to do with what we are following. And that's, that, that is just the, our own um, uh, constitution, so to say, that we embark in. And that's why you can see all those things. So, and then I will, I will, I will also go back home to, to, to pray, because it shows that for him to be able to observe all that, it shows that the Holy Spirit has already begun work in him. Because if not, it would have, it would have, it would, because even some, some of us that are Christians, sometimes when you even leave the church, they will ask you, what was the message today? You may not even be able to remember it. You know? But for the colleague who was not a Christian, was able to observe everything, and those things were pricking him, so to say. To be able to say that we are street, it shows that something is happening. And therefore, the same way that you follow the, uh, the staff policy, and you are bad, to everything without necessarily being, um, having any uh, gross misconduct and being sent away from the office. The same thing is what we do in the church, and the Bible is our pattern and it's our policy book that we use. Thank you very much, sir. Very, very important. We learn from each other uh, because things like this do happen. Somebody says something, and if you are not careful, you almost, yeah. That, that is just the problem we have in our church. Yeah. It's good church, but. But if you know the word of God, if you know what you stand for, you will not be the one that will be against. Because by the time, yes, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. If you don't have those answers to give, if you don't have those practical examples, if, if you don't have a testimony to give, you have actually sent that person out. From this, the person say, I sort of like. That shows there's something this person appreciate like what Brother Adedayo said. The person has, has seen certain things. Yeah, he, he, he's straight. God cannot be this hard. But when you show the person what the word of God says, like Cynthia said, what the word of God says, the person will understand from the angle the church is coming from. We have millions of church in the world that people satisfied they are not satisfied. Some people go to church, they become so disappointed. But somebody is saying, yours is just that um, you, you are straight. This person is not saying, you, you are so loose as a church. Uh, the church should not be this free. So we need to thank God. We need to pray. We need to tell them about the word of God. We need to encourage. And one of the internet audience says, I will encourage my friend to follow the Bible way we says, you shall, um, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. To let them know that they, are, they have been, um, they are required by God. These are requirements by God, I guess, and it is written in the word of God for our guidance. May the Lord help us um, to even know um, what we stand for as a church. You need to know what you stand for. And how do we know what we stand for? 
We need to be reading our Bibles, the literatures. Some people, they ask you, what does your church stand for? Uh, they, they start telling stories. They don't even know what they are talking about. May the Lord deliver you. May he deliver me in Jesus' name. We want to read 1 Timothy 4.7. 1 Timothy 4.7. Brother Shaya will read that for us. Shaya, the new, newest bride in town. Uh, groom, forgive me. The, the newest groom in town. Brother Shaya. 1 Timothy 4.7. 1 Timothy 4, verse 7. I just want to hear your voice. But refuse profane and old wives' tables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. Thank you very much. God bless you. Um, what are some of the ways we can exercise ourselves unto godliness? Your answer should be practical and specific. How can you exercise yourself unto godliness? Give practical examples. How do you do that? Bra, bra, all right, you got. Every service that you are able to attend, you need to attend it. Because that's exercising yourself, that you'll be able to gain more. Nobody has ever been graduated or mature with, from this way. Bible study, Sunday school, prayer meeting, as we are doing now, don't miss anything that you need, don't need to miss. That's exercising yourself. And you pray for the enabling grace to practice what you have learned from these meetings. It's not just listening, but to be doers of it, not hearers only. That is how you can exercise yourself. Okay, more. Yes, Sister Sheke. Like we do our physical exercises. So like Brother Retuga said, it's reading our Bible, taking time to read our Bible, taking time to pray, taking time to come to all the service, but we have to um, be intentional. We have to put our effort into it before it can bless us. Thank you very much, sir. Emma? Yes. Sorry, I can't see. Oh, Brother Francis. <laughs> Chapter 5, verse 22 says, Abstain from all appearance of evil. If we are to exercise ourselves um, unto godliness, then anything that is questionable, you just know that mm, this thing, maybe it's not right. Just avoid it. It is better to do that than to just plunge us. Thank you. Uh, bra, bra Femisa. The principles of being a Christian is building a relationship with God. The more you talk to God, the closer you get to him, the more you understand him. It has been said that godliness is God-likeness. The more you talk to God, the more you understand his nature, the more that nature will feed into you and you will be able to reflect his nature. Thank you very much. Um, any other contributors? Sister Linda, yes? Maybe those people are not Christians or something, and the way they talk to you and push you, the way you react, the way you respond to them, will now make them to have a question in their heart. Who are you? What type of person you are? So in that order, you are says, if in fact, they might even bring a fight you know, to you. The way you respond or the way you behave, maybe walking away or saying sorry, even if when you didn't do anything, will make them to have a question in their heart. In there, you are exercising a godly um, attribute even to them, um, even if when they don't know um, that you are a Christian. Thank you very much. Yes, brother. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Just as we are doing right now. If the, the passage says, uh, 
to be approved if the company has approval quality. If a product is not up to the standard, then we have to stop it. It shouldn't go to the community or to, to the market. So Bible also requires us to be approved because the pilot gate will not open unless we meet the standard. May God help us. Amen. 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 Yes, bright tank. Remember that first, first without work does not really carry weight. Um, apart from just kneeling down to God and getting the, the uh, what do I say? You must love, that's what I'm coming to is your neighbor. Love thy neighbor as thyself. We have to remember that when we say we love God, we are so good, yes, we can attend all the meetings. But maybe someone is in difficulties. We say that is his own problem. May not be somebody that is very close to you. Maybe it may not be somebody that you know. Like, it could be in your office. When people are having functions, when they have something in their, in their home, you don't go. I met the situation that if people don't go, maybe someone dies in, some, in your uh, colleague's family, you don't go. Eventually, they resist you. So we have to also apply our spiritual stand to all the things that God wants us to fulfill to help others. If you have money, you can give if you have. If you don't have, you can say God will provide. So you must be able to do all the things. That is what God wants us to do. That is why we are leaving. I tell children in their class that we are in Okay, the because class. of we our time, sir. One minute. So we are to contribute to each other. Otherwise, we will be staying at home okay. to do the study. Thank you. Um, we want to move on now. So the very last question. What is meant by godliness is profitable unto all things, according to our key verse. We want to be specific in our answers. Um, the key verse, uh, godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that is now, that now is, and of that which is to come. So we know in business world, the reason why people establish one business or the other is not just because they want people to see them that, oh, we have a business. There is a sole reason why you go into business, and that is to make profits. 100 people can be coming there. If you are not making profits, that business is going to close down quickly. So we bring this to the uh, spiritual life. Now, what is meant by godliness is profitable unto all things. God, uh, godliness is profitable unto all things. What do we mean by that? What do we mean by that? Yes, Brasher, yes, bless you. It's profitable for us now. We get blessings from God. We, uh, we get protection, provision from God. And then it's also profitable in the long run. That is to say we make heaven and we reign with Christ in the end. Bless you. More. Profitable. Yes. Godliness is profitable. Um, uh, to be God, if holistic, serving God is holistic in everything. There's no demarcation. No, not setting some things apart to be godly and some not to be ungodly. It's all Thank you. I want more specific answers. Yes, Sister Stella. Junior, keep going. It's, it's profitable because you. you are not the one that only is blessed. Everyone around you, because we are supposed to win souls. People out there are looking for who is going to live the life, who is living a different life. So you are blessed, like my family, coming to this gospel, they've been blessed because when they are in trouble and they have nowhere to go, I remember my sister had a daughter who had mental case. She said, I trust your church. She doesn't come to this church. She said, I don't want to take her anywhere 
and she brought her to this church and God healed her. Amen. I've had many people too who just you living the life have been to parties where I determined to take my stand and be different. And people who are highly placed will come to me and say, wow, how could you do that? Live so natural. So you think people are, are they, they think the standard is high, but they love it when they see you. So it's profitable to them. A lady came to me and said, wow, all this money I spent for my jewelry. And look, you're looking beautiful. Why do I spend all this money? So it's profitable to all things. Thank you. Let me just take the contribution from the internet audience. Um, it is necessary to be godly in everything we do because there is blessing in following the way of God. Another contributor said, seek the kingdom of God first and all these things shall be added unto you. God, uh, serving God is profitable as by serving, as, as by serving God we will not lack. Amen. Godliness is profitable. People will be blessed also through you. Amen. Amen. And the most important of all, we get to make heaven. Amen. So there is dividends here on earth. You know, uh, when I was a lot younger, my parents had shares. And then um, I will go to meetings to represent my mom. Not that I'm going to be speaking there, but at the end of the day, they're going to give me goody goodies to bring home. And my brother represent my dad because they, don't, they really did not have the time. They just invested in all this. So that is the dividend. And uh, you, you can see, you can, yeah, it, it's physical. Same thing in this life. God will bless. Just look at what has happened to the world. How did the apostolic faith, Western, um, UK, Western Europe, escape death of any sort regarding to COVID-19. When millions in this same world we are living in, it is profitable. These are some of the fringe benefits of being a child of God. And you know what? That is just, I, I mentioned that because it's something general. You cannot deny it in terms of millions of people that died. And God spared every one of us. We shall forever be grateful to this God. And you know what? If you are faithful, and I am faithful, by the grace of God, one of these days, we shall find ourselves sitting beside our Jesus. And you look at him, Jesus, so this is you. It will happen to you in Jesus' name. It will happen to me in Jesus' name. That is the end of our lesson. Thank you to all the contributors and the internet audience.
That's the end of our Sunday school. Let's go on our knees and pray. And uh, 11.15, the devotional service will start. God bless you.